morning, it's Saturday, it's race weekend. It's the 19th, 19th of June. <laughs> Who knows what day it is. It's the 19th of June. I'm up in Nottingham for Outlaw Half. I've just been out on my bike this morning for a little spin, check it's all working. We got here yesterday, um, came up via my friend's house just down the road and um, got to see her and her little tiny baby for the first time since my wedding in November 2019. So that was a really nice positive start to the weekend, took my mind off things a little bit. Um, so yeah, we got here last night, had actually slept for seven hours straight last night for the first time in about six months so I feel like a new woman um, and yeah just been out on the bike this morning just for 20 minutes just literally went out 10 minutes that way 10 minutes this way check it's all working okay um because it was on top of the car in the wind and the rain on the motorway for like two and a half hours yesterday I was looking at it through the sunroof like please be okay <laughs> but the beast seems okay legs are feeling good roads are actually quite nice around here I know these people have said like oh the roads are awful but um compared to where I live pretty smooth so yeah I'm happy um so yeah I've just got to have some breakfast get my bike all ready to take down to transition to go and do my check-in my time for check-in is 10 to 11 30 they've got it all sort of separate um into different slots for covid purposes just to keep us all kind of separate so yeah i need to put the sticks on um get my race back out put my security wristband on <laughs> vip um i'm joking <laughs> um and then yeah head down there and then uh sort myself out do a bit of transition practice today um work out what i need to prep for my nutrition um i need to try and get it so it's nice and waterproof because of course it's gonna rain all day tomorrow apparently so yeah but we made it we're here it's a race and it's actually fingers crossed happening um I still like it feels so surreal I feel like after covid like I don't trust anything until I'm on that start line getting in the water I won't believe that this is happening because it's just been cancellation after cancellation so yeah we made it we're here it's race weekend I'm nervous I'm excited and I'm gonna bring you guys along for the ride beast is wrecked just trying to get my bearings it's quite a big transition i think it's about half a mile long so i'm like literally sat back in the middle which is kind of nice um not too many people here yet it's quite nice and quiet you can see so yeah just trying to get my bearings work out where i am i feel like i've been walking for about 20 minutes we seem to have managed to park like ridiculously far away the guy was like yeah you don't want to park here tomorrow <laughs> so yeah just uh trying to get my bearings all wrecked even the beast i feel like this is what parents must feel like when they drop their kids off at nursery for the first time it's like oh bye <laughs> I have stuff absolutely everywhere <laughs> but I think I've got everything I've just um, done some transition practice just to think through what I'm going to do in what order um, depending on what I need how rainy it is and stuff like that so just had a quick run through of that um, and now I'm just laying out my kit double checking I've got everything and then working out what needs to go in my transition bag for tomorrow what I need to be putting on tomorrow morning and what things are going to need to be in plastic bags um, things like my um clothes to put on afterwards to try and keep them nice and dry because i think it's gonna be quite a wet day and it's gonna be nothing worse than finishing the race and then having soggy clothes to put back on so um yeah just working through all of that logistical stuff i don't know about anyone else but i find the logistics the most stressful bit before a race trying to think what do i need what do i need to go what do i need to do that's like the thing that stresses me out the most so once i've kind of done all of this my bike's racked my kit is checked um my stickers are on everything everything sorted i feel a lot better so yeah we're getting there <laughs> okay so helmet stickers are on race belt with my number which I've just filled in all the next of kin stuff sign your life away stuff got my swim cap 
goggles i'm going to take some spare goggles as well just in case they snap they're luchi brand new so they should be fine um but yeah just in case got my wetsuit ready to go got my tri suit and my heart rate monitor um and then i've got bike shoes run shoes and a cap not because I think it's going to be sunny, but more to keep the rain out of my eyes on the run. So yeah, I think that's everything. I might take some sunglasses, <laughs> being optimistic, just in case. Um, but yeah, I think that's everything in terms of things to wear. There we go, I'll pre-race flatly. So six o'clock, time for a super early dinner, like an old lady. I'm having a gourmet meal of tuna and rice. Meanwhile, somebody is having pizza and beer, which just is not fair. <laughs> you could have this? I couldn't. Because <laughs> I've got to do a race tomorrow, so yeah, this is my uh, I had this cat before. food dinner. <laughs> Good morning. Morning. What time is it, Jenny? Early. 3.25. What day is it? It's race day. Taking some porridge at 3.25 a.m. Back in the day when you'd only be eating at this hour because you just got home from a night out and you were drunk. <laughs> and what we got? What we got on there? Taking some porridge. Mm -hmm. Oats and some almond milk. Just about to pop them in the microwave. Nice. And eat kawabe. <laughs> on the other side. That sounds a little bit morbid. I will see you guys on the other side.
So, Jenny, how are you feeling? Yeah, alright. Yeah? Legs are okay, a bit dehydrated, a bit tired. I couldn't sleep last night. I literally never sleep the night after a race, so um, yeah, a bit tired, but okay. I'll do a proper, like, how did it go chat later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got a PB. Um, bit disappointed, didn't quite go according to plan, but it was a PB, so. Trying to be positive, can't complain really, and yeah, a few things to learn, a few things to tweak for the fall. But yeah, I think they should <laughs> Okay, so it's um, almost three weeks later now um, but I realised I said at the end of uh, the last clip that I was going to do a bit of an update on what happened on the race um, hello I've got Arthur on my lap you think you can see the top of his head here he is that's why I'm on the floor by the way <laughs> I don't just always sit on the floor um, yeah so what happened what happened in outdoor half who can remember um, so let's start with the swim so got in a swim felt pretty good for the first half um, had quite a lot of space in the water, water didn't feel too cold and then I suddenly had like a bit of a wall of people to try and negotiate around um, still feeling okay and then just towards the halfway mark or just after I just started to feel really really sick really cold, um, I felt like I couldn't get any sort of feel for the water um, and just like my whole body was shaking just felt absolutely rubbish, got a few mouthfuls of bird pooey water as well um, which didn't help with the feeling sick situation so yeah swim wasn't ideal um a lot to work on there came out of the water probably four minutes slower than i was expecting which is then um, really disheartening like it's such a rubbish way to start a race kind of coming out and being disappointed um so yeah that wasn't great um i think we've realized that my old wetsuit was lifting my legs too high out of the water um i bought it last year and kind of just put the fact that my pool times were way faster than my open water times down to the fact that like we just hadn't done a lot of open water swimming and it was cold and da 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 um, but yeah did a little bit of an experiment in the pool uh, the week after swimming with a pool boy and then without a pool boy and actually I was way slower with the pool boy so I um, decided to invest in a new wetsuit he said triathlon is not an expensive sport right <laughs> So yeah, I got a new hoop wetsuit, I went for the um, Aura 3.3, so neutral buoyancy, and oh my god, what a difference, like I've done a few swims in it, and I just feel so much more comfortable in the water, um, a lot more flexibility around my shoulders, <laughs> Arthur's rolling around on the floor like a maniac, um, a lot more flexibility around the shoulders, just generally fits me better, it's a lot thinner neoprene, um, so like it's just a lot more flexible, and also my legs are now kind of level, so I can actually kick, so that's one thing, at least I've sorted it out, um, hopefully I'll feel better in the swim next time. My only issue that I'm struggling with now is that I'm still getting insanely cold in the water. The water is not even cold at the moment. I don't know what's going on, but it's like as soon as I go over kind of half an hour in the lake, like my whole body just starts shivering and I get absolutely freezing, like I did just over an hour on Sunday just gone and by the time I got out of the water like my whole body was shaking, my hands had gone purple, um, I get Raynaud's syndrome where my fingertips go completely white and get no blood to them that I'd all kicked in and I was supposed to be going straight out for a run and literally had to sit and have an emergency cup of tea in the car <laughs> to warm up so yeah I don't really know, I've asked on Instagram a few people have given me some really good tips and tricks to try so I'm going to try that at the weekend um, and hopefully get a bit better not being cold but yeah so swim outdoor half not according to plan felt sick way slower than i wanted it to be got really cold yeah onto the bike um so it was a super long run from swim exit to transition um transition was about a kilometer long as well so like that was always going to be slow um but yeah got there as quick as i could while still shivering like a little wet dog um got on the bike and yeah felt really really sick had really bad stomach pain couldn't stop shaking, my teeth were chattering, I couldn't feel my hands, was struggling to change my gears, struggling to even like, if I could have stomached my nutrition I couldn't have picked it up anyway because I was just so cold and I like, it's frustrating because I took the time to put a jacket on, I was like right I'm just gonna have to look like a chopper, I'm gonna have to put a jacket on, you know, I, but yeah so I was still really cold, it took about 50k into the bike to actually probably warm up um, and yeah every time I tried to put out my target power I just felt like I was going to be sick or like had a stabbing pain in my stomach so bike was um, 
a lot slower than I was hoping for. Um, probably 10, 15 minutes slower than we thought maybe I might be able to do, which is frustrating. I did sort of settle in after that 50K. I warmed up and was like, right, come on, Jenny. The faster you ride, the sooner you can get off your bike and start running, um, and the sooner this whole thing will be done. <laughs> so yeah, um, not great. Got back onto the run. I'd literally managed about that much water, a couple of tiny sips of my water and energy gel um, solution, and like maybe a quarter of an OT duo bar. Um, I said on Instagram like straight after I was like I freaking love my OT duo bars so that tells you how crap I was feeling because I couldn't even stomach those and they're like my favorite thing um so yeah I got off the bike and was just like right let's just see what happens with the run I'd genuinely considered pulling out on the bike at the 25k mark I was like right if I see the broom wagon I'm getting in it I'm going home um which is completely not like me like even at my first ever half Ironman's LMZ when a massive storm came in and they were pulling people off the course like I argued like my life depended on it to be allowed to finish I had 800 meters to the finish line and I was like everyone else around me was like oh great get to have a sit down and I was like no I want to finish so yeah it's really not like me to even consider not finishing so yeah it just shows I just wasn't in a good place um but yeah so I got to the run and was like let's just see what happens and weirdly despite the fact I had zero fuel in me um still felt sick still had stomach pains like I was running pretty well I was actually running faster than we thought I was going to probably because I'd done like bummer all on the bike <laughs> so um yeah timing wise like my swim was like oh god like 40 minutes something um just a lot slower than I thought it was going to be bike I did two hours 54 minutes for the 90k and I was hoping for something more two hours 40 two forty-five. so yeah a bit disappointed with that got onto the run um felt really good felt really strong i felt like i was overtaking quite a lot of people um around me i don't know if they were just on <laughs> felt like further laps along um but yeah i was just kind of focusing on doing a pac-man and just thinking right next person next person next person keep overtaking eat 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 like that <laughs> Managed to um, have a little bit of energy gel, like literally one sip, and then I was like, no, I don't want any more than that. And I think because it was only a half marathon, I could kind of get away with it. Obviously, in a full, that's going to bite you in the arse later on. So, um, but yeah, made it through the run, felt really strong, felt really good. And I was like, do you know what? Like, this is supposed to be fun. I've done this voluntarily. Like, stop whinging, Jenny. Stop moaning. Stop being a princess. Do your best to enjoy it. So I just made a point of smiling at everyone, waving at everyone, um, having a good time, and just trying to soak up the atmosphere. Obviously, it's really different to races pre-COVID. There's no one around, really, compared to what I've been used to, especially because I've done sort of big European Ironman races. Like, Ironman Copenhagen was my first Ironman, and nothing's going to compare to that because it was just, like, a massive party, and we had loads of friends and family there so yeah but yeah did my best to soak up the atmosphere um, and ran pretty well I did one hour 44 minutes including a little uh, stop for a portally <laughs> if you know you know um yeah and finished so I did five hours 33 minutes which technically is a PB um yeah first half I man I did was at ZLMZ um I'd only started riding a bike less than a year beforehand or maybe a year and a bit beforehand so I was still very much nervous on the bike for that and if you know ZLMZ you'll know that you end up cycling up a mountain so um and then running the half marathon at altitude after a mountain bike that was always going to be a slow day <laughs> so I think that took me like oh, six and a half hours or something and then my second half Ironman was at Grafham um in May 2019 but they had to cancel the swim because there was like insane fog that meant you literally couldn't see this fire in front of your face so um yeah so again like that I think I did four hours 55 for the bike and the run um I had plantar fasciitis in my foot for the run so I had to run that nice and easy so it wasn't really like a a good test of where I was at so yeah technically a PB um and like the times I did like I still averaged over 30k an hour on the bike around a 144 half marathon which you know a year and a half ago was like my personal best time for a half marathon so lots to be positive about but it's also given me a lot of things to sort out so I've mentioned the wetsuit sorting that out um working on things to try and get less cold in the swim I don't know why I get so cold it's really annoying like if I could just like I don't mind being uncomfortable but when your whole body is shaking and you can't feel your hands like it's very difficult to do what you need to do so 
trying to work that out and then nutrition wise I've actually started working with a dietitian um, I've mentioned a few times I have to follow a low FODMAP diet so it makes fueling even more of a nightmare especially in the run-up to a race so she's given me some really good advice some things that I've implemented I've done a couple of nutrition tests since then um, which involves like 48 hours of really bland beige food and rice pudding and that's pretty much it so that's super fun <laughs> but yeah I think hopefully we've cracked it I'm gonna do one more test this weekend with a few things that she's um, recommended for me so hopefully that will sort out the feeling sick the stomach pain all of that stuff um, and then yeah I've just got to kind of uh, I've just got to see what I can do when it comes to the full outlaw um, they say bad dress rehearsal good final performance so yeah hopefully that's given me kind of things to work on things this week um, and I've had the chance to do that I've put in some really good training um, did a 20 mile run this morning before work got up at 4am <laughs> as you do on a Thursday morning um, and yeah that went really well like I could have carried on all day I felt absolutely fine um so yeah we'll see we will see it was a it was a learning experience it was a bit disappointing I think because I'd hyped it up so much in my head and I was thinking it's going to be this like super positive like I was feeling in really good shape and kind of felt like I had the potential to really smash it so coming away slightly disappointed was a bit of a downer a bit of a confidence knock but trying to pull myself up by my pants put my big girl pants on and uh yeah just try and have a better day at the fall in a couple of weeks so I'm gonna wrap this up here because I've got a little monkey let me show you here he is got a little monkey hi um wanting to play <laughs> but yeah thank you so much for watching um hopefully you've enjoyed this video um do like and subscribe if you would like to see more i'm going to try and vlog maybe the week re leading up to outlaw and then do another race vlog if i can get my trusty husband to try and film some bits and bobs for me so yeah take care if you're racing at outlaw let me know in the comments below um it would be lovely to see some of you out there make it a little bit less lonely but yeah until next time